This is uh, a meeting of the Devons Jurisdiction Framework Committee. It is December 13th, 2023. My name is Victor Norman. I am the chair. I will now call the roll. Alan Maroyan. Present. Janice Livingston. Present. Robert Pontbriand. Rich Mayori. Here. Tim Bragan. Brian Sawyer. Present. Rico Capucci. Mike McGovern. Here. Bill Marshall. Here. I see Bill Marshall. Uh, Neil Angus. Not here. Um, John Cater. Here. Odeal Smith. Kristen mm -hmm. Cullen. We have a majority. We are in order. Uh, this meeting, the, uh, the meeting will be hosted by the town of Shirley, um, and I believe it will be Brian Correct. Sawyer conducting the meeting. Brian, the agenda is all yours. Okay, thank you. Um, first item on the agenda is the approval of the meeting minutes of November 8, 2023. Is there a motion in favor? I, I had no issues with the meeting minutes. Janice, is there a second? Second. Well, it wasn't okay. a motion. Any? I was just saying I didn't have any oh. issues. Any? Nobody else is. I just, okay. is anybody? Okay, <coughs> nobody seems to have any issues. All right, so I will make a motion. Um, I make a motion that the meeting minutes for November 8th, 2023 be approved as submitted. Second. Okay. Um, do we have to do a roll call? Or Not a roll call, just. Show of hands. Sir. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Aye. Okay, that passes. All right, um, next on the agenda, um, we have a stakeholder update, um, and we'll begin with the Town of Air. So right now, um, as far as our local committee, um, kind of status quo, um, but they are meeting today. Um, so they are can continue to meet, and, um, but they haven't been around long enough to really get too much of something to report, so. Um, nothing else from Air, Town of Harvard. Town of Harvard, the Harvard Devon's Jurisdiction Committee did meet uh, last week, and mostly we discussed uh, Vicksburg Square and we're still anticipating financial information from Mass Development, and we've been told that their board would review this, the agency budget, which includes the Devons budget, at their meeting on the 14th, and we expect to have uh, their budget for our review, which we will pass along to this committee uh, shortly after that. And that's our report. Um, for the town of Shirley, uh, I do not have any um Update. I don't know if the town administrator has. Not at this point, no. Okay. Um, Devin's uh, representatives. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, I'm going to have Marissa Rivera um, deliver the first portion of our update. Uh, Marissa, are you with us? There you are. And then uh, I'll come in and close towards the end. Marissa, I'll give you the floor. Thanks, John. So we have a pretty robust update. I'm mostly reporting out from the first in-person meeting we held with Devon's residents last month. That meeting was very well attended with very good participation by Devon's residents. We originally anticipated that people would stay just for the first hour of the presentation with maybe some limited questions, followed by an additional hour for those intending to ask other questions in a more casual forum. But we found that people were so engaged and inquisitive that everyone stayed for the full two hours with many more q and as a group. We distributed three bags. Can we turn up the volume a little bit? Hold on, Marissa, the volume's a little low. Sorry. Is that it or is this it? Oh, no, that's, I don't think that's it. <laughs> um, what? There are some folks in the waiting room. Okay, hold on. I'm trying to multitask here. Hang on a second. Um, Marissa, could you speak up, please? We just want to up the volume. Oh, volume I can yeah. see yeah. the All right. with the, uh, yeah. I got it. Okay, all right. Okay. All right, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, good. thank you. Much better, much better. Okay. <laughs> Great. Um, do I need to repeat what I said, or should I keep going from where I was? Anybody? Could you repeat it, Marissa? We're, we're good to go. If you could start from the top. Thank okay. you. Okay, oh, great. Um, so our first in-person meeting that we held for Devon's residents was very well attended with very good participation. We anticipated that people would stay just for the first hour of presentation with some limited questions followed by an additional hour for those intending to ask uh, other questions in a more casual forum. We actually found that people were so engaged and inquisitive that everyone who attended stayed for the full two hours with many more Q&A opportunities as a group. 
We had distributed three by five cards to each resident with a request to write their questions anonymously on them. And over the two hours, we were able to address all the submissions and provide a direct follow-up post-meeting to correct or clarify information that was provided by our volunteer group in the meeting. Um, we wanted to share a few examples of questions that were asked. We thought that would be of interest to folks in this group. So reading verbatim from a couple of the three by five cards we, were, we received. Uh, for the 2033 study, who is driving things to happen faster? Which towns have requested an accelerated timeline? What plans are there to deal with toxic materials when it comes to renovating Vicksburg Square? What role do businesses have in the selection of the way forward? Who made the decision to decouple Vicksburg Square from Devon's future? And can you summarize what the other towns were doing in the last five years as far as jurisdiction? Uh, these questions, I think, really demonstrate the increased engagement of Devon's residents on this critical issue of jurisdiction, as well as the need for a lot more education and engagement. Uh, we're currently preparing our near and longer term timeline for increased resident engagement through both survey inputs and direct discussions. Residents have expressed a desi desire for more communication through emails, small group neighborhood meetings, and large group meetings. For us, this is going to include both in-person and Zoom, depending on topics and time. We've also tentatively identified the next potential large group meeting date um, and are working with residents to schedule it. We plan to continue sharing other fact-based information on various topics that are of interest to the residents through emails and personal discussions. Um, so there's a lot of information, a lot of update. I think, you know, as illustrated by this update, what we really want to communicate to the group is that we're working hard to create the space and structure that Devon's residents really need to engage in the jurisdiction process as critical investors in the community. This work takes a lot of time and effort on an all-volunteer basis, and we feel that we really need the time that we have between now and 2033 to do it well. More recently, uh, with the resident notification regarding the draft super time meeting article, we've seen an even bigger uptick in engagement and communication, um, and I think that likely is resulting in an uptick of Devon's residents at today's meeting, although I can't see the public section of the meeting. It's full. They're, they're here. <laughs> Great, that's great, hi neighbors. Um, our, our last quick update is that uh, Senator Cronin joined the December Devons Committee meeting last week. Uh, the meeting was very well attended and there was very good dialogue with several questions asked and answered. Overall, the Senator's presence and straightforward dialogue was appreciated and very well received by residents. I'm gonna hand it back to John to wrap it up. Thanks, Marissa. So in summary, um, thank you for coming out. Very important meeting, everyone from all the towns in Devons. We agree with our local legislators that rezoning for housing is important, but that redrawing county lines and changing jurisdiction of certain parcels on Devons, specifically Vicksburg Square, will dramatically delay the opportunity to alleviate the housing crisis in the Commonwealth. While there is broad consensus among Devons residents that Vicksburg Square needs to be saved, the cost of doing so and the fact that occupancy is years away makes other parcels on Devons more feasible to address the housing issue in the near term. There is also broad consensus among Devons residents that decoupling of select parcels from Devons in advance of the agreed to jurisdictional timeline is not an appropriate path forward. No one has invested more of their personal money in Devons than the residents. They have invested hundreds of thousands of dollars per household to make Devons their home. We embrace our diversity and will continue to assist those in need across our Commonwealth, whether with social support services or housing. The only request is that we have a full equivalent stakeholder role during the discussions and the overall process. Lastly, we recommend raising the housing cap and rezoning other specifically identified parcels for housing to allow those parcels to be developed and deliver housing earlier than Vicksburg Square. Thank you very much. Thanks, John. Okay, um, there's nothing else from Devon's representatives. Mm -hmm. uh, we will move on to a uh, stakeholder update from the Devon's Enterprise Commission. Hi, Bill Marshall. Uh, um, uh, Neil uh, Angus is here uh, as well. Uh, we, uh, uh, Neil provided you with a, uh, the information necessary for the super town meeting. I think it's a, a part of your package. Uh, and uh, uh, that will be discussed a little bit later on. Uh, we also, uh, as, a, as the DEC, uh, believe that uh, Vicksburg Square uh, 
uh, <coughs> should be separate from the jurisdiction committee discussion, perhaps a, uh, a, a some kind of a committee uh, put together uh, for that purpose. Uh, but uh, we also feel that the, uh, <coughs> the, the town line and county line would be a very uh, <coughs> a uh, large obstacle in that process. Uh, Neil, do you have other information? Yeah, uh, thanks, Bill. I would just add that, um, you know, I think the warrant article language uh, that was put forth, I understand it as a, as a first cut and, a, you know, initial start to kind of start the discussion. But I think it's important to point out that there are existing mechanisms under Chapter 498 that would allow uh, the towns to uh, work with mass development and the state, all stakeholders to uh, identify a process under the existing Chapter 498 to avoid having to go through changing town boundaries, uh, making any interim jurisdictional determinations, um, everything that I think this group has talked about wanting to achieve can be done under the existing purview of Chapter 498. Um, it's just a matter of, as, as Mr. Marshall mentioned, separating this out from the permanent jurisdiction discussions. We're spending way too much time as a, a jurisdictional framework committee meeting, uh, you know, group talking about the, the jurisdiction or disposition of Vicksburg Square um, it is important. We need to move forward on that as quickly as possible, but let's set up a separate committee or a separate entity to, to deal with that and let the DJFC focus on the long-term uh, disposition of Devons uh, and the entire future of Devons uh, comprehensively. Okay. Um, there's nothing else from the Devons Enterprise Commission. Uh, we'll move on to old business. Um, we do have the RFEI update. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just quickly, uh, we have some other copies here if people in the audience want to grab a uh, copy. But I've been working with the town manager in air here, and what you see is about a four-page document. And it's really right now just a sample of what it would look like uh, if we were to put forward um, an RFI. Um, there are a number of legal pieces to this that always have to be in, whether it's an RFI or an RFP or uh, a, a bidding document like this. Um, in terms of what would need to happen, is that you would have to post this in uh, what's called combis, um, and then also post in either the central register or the goods and services bulletin, and that's uh, a website, and it's under the jurisdiction of the Secretary of State. We would also have to post in a uh, local newspaper for two weeks. Uh, we would have to host it on our well, we could do it on the Devon's Jurisdictional Framework website. Um, and then you would have to also post uh, on the town bulletins uh, in each one of the communities. Um, you're looking at, in terms of the posting process from when it goes up to when we start receiving uh, responses is typically about a month to six weeks or so. Um, like I said, it's probably 80% completed. Um, there are some other things, there are still some things in here that need to be tweaked, uh, but for the most part, um, what we have here is about 80% of what would be put out onto the street at this point. So, um, you know, we'll just wait to see um, who wants to respond to this. Uh, we may or may not get any responses. You know, it's, it's tough to tell, but, um, but We'll find that out one way or the other by putting this out onto the street, though, so so to speak. Okay. Um, moving along, we have the Vicksburg Square Super Town Meeting draft article. <clears throat> um, I'll, <clears throat> excuse me. I'll speak to that. Uh, Robert Pontbrian and I worked on this, and uh, I'd just like to say that the comments from the. A Devons group and also the comments from the Enterprise Commission were comments that we've heard before. Uh, and we took those into consideration when we drafted uh, this uh, Warren article. Uh, I think the, the, the 
first statement uh, addresses the issue of uh, the future, potential future of Vicksburg Square. And it merely uh, states that it would be the choice of the town meetings that when uh, jurisdiction and permanent government is finally established, that Vicksburg Square would be in the town of Air. It doesn't uh, advocate that that happen anytime sooner than is stipulated in Chapter 498, uh, nor does it address the issue of boundary change. I mean, that would be something that uh, also would uh, fold into the long-term discussion of permanent government. Uh, the first item under the super town meeting is, is really aspirational, uh, but it does make a statement. Uh, and we thought it was important to do that up front uh, for the sake of clarity when Vicksburg Square is developed. So that although it's not a certainty that it would be entirely in the town of Air, any developer or any future resident would be informed that that is the aspiration of the three towns. Uh, and that's, as a practical consideration, knowing where you're going to live, uh, whether it's you know in 2033 or or sooner, uh, it seems to be critical to not to both the development of housing anywhere at Devons, uh, as well as uh, the occupancy of that housing. Uh, an example of that is one of the, we'll get to this in another section of this uh, Warren article, is uh, that there should be a, an affordable housing home purchase component to Vicksburg Square, that not all of the units should be rental units. And clearly when, some, when a developer is designing their project, they need to know in, for marketing purposes where the project is eventually going to be located. Uh, AIR is a very solid, middle income community. Harvard is, from a real estate perspective, is, is, it, is, is an inflated price-wise community. So for the purpose of establishing what would probably be first time home buyer housing, uh, having uh, to the, both the developer and future purchasers anticipate that it's going to be in, in the town of Vare will ultimately make the for sale housing more affordable. Uh, nonetheless, again, the first section is merely aspirational. It doesn't advocate moving up the date for determining permanent government, uh, nor does it advocate changing any boundaries uh, at this time. Uh, the second item simply uh, changes the zoning specifically for Vicksburg Square, uh, which was uh, the way in which the previous two Super Town Meeting articles uh, were handled. Uh, I think it was Marissa who stated at the last meeting or the meeting before that what, what is really needed at Devons is a plan for more housing and not just to uh, do it on a s spot zoning basis. And so the amendment that was pro proposed originally by Senator Cronin took an entire zone at Devons and said uh, it's now, uh, pr housing is now permitted in that zone without carefully looking at uh, whether it was appropriate for all portions of that zone. So again, the second section of the draft article is restricted to Vicksburg Square, but it does change the zone to allow housing. Uh, the third section, uh, which uh, is clearly draft at this point, caps the number of units at 400 for the purpose of having a limit. And I don't think anyone has proposed any more than 400 units. Uh, at uh, Vicksburg Square. Uh, and then it, it splits up how those units might be used. 25% as affordable, uh, uh, I'm sorry, as rental housing, 25% as elderly or special needs rental housing, and 50% uh, the homes for sale to families and individuals. And then it, it goes on to say that exactly 25% of the units uh, will be affordable and makes the exception for elderly and special needs that they may exceed the 25 percent. So I think that uh, the, the article would raise the cap uh, and permit housing uh, and then set uh, again as, a, as an aspirational goal that eventually all of Vicksburg Square uh, would be within the town of Air once permanent government is established. 
So I just want to <coughs> clarify something, Mr. Chair, that when we say when permanent governance is um, done in 2033, and based on this article, which just those for those, wow, it is a full room, um, those who don't know, I was the one that brought it up. Okay, so I'm sorry I caused so much stress. Um, uh, what I'm attempting to do is also answer questions that town meeting asks. Well, what if, what if, what if? And here's the other part that and would get said at town meeting if we were to go forward at super town meeting and that question come up. I don't know what's happening in 2033. It could go back to the original towns. It could become an own town. It could be cut up. And, and, and become, you know, pieces given back and, and it's still becoming in its own town, none of us know, okay? So that was the purpose of this conversation is to just kind of say, but if, so, I mean, maybe that needs to be reworded, maybe it needs to be struck. I, I was not intending to cause stress on everybody, okay? But the, but <laughs> I really wasn't. Um, but, but the bottom line is, is, is it did bring it to now we're finally discussing it. And, and so on, on that part, I'm very happy um, that that's happened. Okay. Um, but I just wanted to kind of say again, you know, even though we keep talking, because honestly, the town of Air, the town of Shirley, and the town of Harvard obviously would like their historical property back. If you were li living in one of these towns, you'd feel the same way. You don't completely understood okay so so obviously that is a hope but I don't know what's happening in 2033 because we don't know what that report's going to say because we all have to work together and get the report written and get it out and then see where the chips lay bottom line is and I've said this before some are going to be happy some are going to be unhappy and some are going to be going what happened okay um I also just I, if I may in, as far as the increased timeline, I thought that discussion was put to bed a couple of months ago because it was decided that would open a Pandora's box. Um, so I, I can tell you the town of Air is not rushing. And I don't believe that it should be rushed. Now, it may be, it, you know, if everyone's, you know, working together, everything's done, maybe it gets a year ahead maybe you're looking at that but we're not looking at there's no way we could do it any earlier than that just no way so i'm a little surprised that that part of the conversation has come up again so anyway that you know just to, to reinforce uh, uh janice's comment that when robert and i drafted this we had in mind that we wanted to put before the three towns and the devons residents an article that has a high likelihood of passing super town meeting We've tried twice before and it has failed. Uh, and I think if uh, we attempt it a third time and it, it doesn't pass, then I think the likes of Senator Cronin will just take, and the administration in all fairness, uh, will just take that as a signal that the locals are not gonna be able to deal with Vicksburg Square. Uh, and so we're just gonna take, take over and decide what's gonna happen there. Uh, and take it completely out of our hands, uh, as Senator Cronin's amendment would have done. Uh, and uh, w I think uh, most of us agree that that is not how we would like to proceed. And that's why this committee is involved in this, that, that we want to retain local control over future Devons, and we don't want the legislature or this administration or a future administration to just take liberties and decide that Devons is state property uh, and we'll just uh, ignore Chapter 498 and just uh, amend it to our liking. Um, and I don't think uh, I don't think that's uh, to anybody's uh, local advantage to doing that. Mr. Chairman, if I may. Yes. Um, in talking to our constituency, the Devons residents, the, the the position they've asked me to take is there can be no reference to preferential future disposition on any parcels of Devons. And our legislatures are telegraphing to us that if you attach jurisdictional discussions, changing county lines, and Vicksburg Square, that will slam the brakes on everything. And we all heard them say that. So if we're going to, um, if we're going to address the need to, re to, to rezone Vicksburg Square for residential, the jurisdictional discussion, the drawing of town lines as it relates to 
um, Vicksburg Square has to stop. That's, they, they, they said that out loud. We all heard them say it. So if we want to really make a successful effort to rezone properties on Devons to address um, the even Secretary um, Governor Healy's um, team is, is, is tracking the towns that are MBTA co compliant and they're checking them off box by box. So if we want to do that, we've got to remove the jurisdictional discussion. The other concern that my constituency has said is that if it's just Vicksburg Square, remember you have to get access to Vicksburg Square, which means all lands north. So all those ball fields, acres and acres of land goes to air, right? So it's not just Vicksburg Square, it's all the land that you determine has access. So we totally get the aspirational thing. We are completely in line with, we need more housing, um, you know, we need to raise the cap. We need to be, we need to do it, you know, uh, in, in a very effective, efficient way and maintain that jurisdictional discussion in this committee uh, versus elsewhere. Okay. So. To your point, uh, John, the legislature has given the three towns and Devon's residents the authority to rezone without going back to them. A super town meeting does not involve approval of the legislature. Right. Okay, it's just so uh, I don't know where Senator Cronin is coming from, but we don't need uh, the legislature or the governor to change uh, the, the reuse plan. So, so I think that, you know, there's lots to be discussed here, and I think what we'd like to recommend uh, to this committee is that this Warren article go back to each of the towns and to the Devons residents uh, for input. Uh, and then what I'd like to suggest to the committee is that uh, the towns and Devons residents get their input back to Robert and I so we can uh, coordinate it and get it back to this committee for, for future sure. discussion. Now, what I'd like to, just if I may, uh, just stepping back a bit to uh, the report that you gave from your committee. Your committee is newly formed. This committee has been in existence for four years, and the, many of the questions in, that have been raised by your committee, uh, there are answers to those questions. So I'm wondering if your committee couldn't put their concerns, their questions in writing to us and get it back to the committee, to me, and I will uh, get it to other members of the committee. Maybe we can respond. Uh, to some of the concerns that have already been uh, raised and, and in some cases answered. Sure, you referring to the Devons Committee, uh, Mr. Well, Chair? Well, yeah, yeah. what so was Marissa referring to? Was that the, the Devons Committee meeting or our elected representatives at Devons who okay. were faced with mass development. But that's where Senator Cronin went to, oh, to okay. talk to that. I'm, I'm not on that committee, but. No. Well, the, 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 the second was the first Chair. event. Yeah, go ahead, Marissa. Marissa? And, Richard, were you referring to the questions I shared from the three by five cards from the Devons yes, residents? Yes, yes. Yeah, areas. so we, we are aware that those questions have answers and um, have researched and communicated those answers to residents. I wasn't sharing them as questions that don't, um, that we're not sure how to, how to respond or research. Okay. I was sharing them as examples of what folks are wondering about in the Devons residential community. And to illustrate that, you know, even though this committee has been meeting for four years, our volunteer work to educate and engage residents is really um, not just getting started, but it's in its early stages and has a lot of work ahead of us. That okay. was the, the intention in sharing that information. Okay. Right, understood. So, uh, is Victor, could I, could I add something? Sure. Thanks. Um, so, the warrant language put forth, you know, is, I think, like I said, is, you know, it's a start of a discussion, but it's a big discussion. Um, it's, it's something that, you know, this committee is ending up spending all of their time on. So like we've said, and a few people have mentioned this, why not set up a, a separate committee to deal with this specifically so that we continue on, continue on as a group, as this group with the RFEI um, and getting that whole you know, future disposition process um, streamlined and out. And we can have a separate committee or agency dealing with this Vicksburg Square issue. It's not as simple as just saying, let's change, you know, change the zoning of Vicksburg Square to allow housing. There's amendments to the reuse plan that need to, like, for both mapping amendments and text amendments that need to be done to the reuse plan, to the Devon's bylaw changes, addressing the housing cap issue. Uh, there's a lot to it than just the three or four paragraphs that are in this warrant article. Um, you know, and, and I think that's going to take some time to, um, you know, discuss and, and come to consensus on. So 
I would suggest setting up a, a separate committee or subcommittee to deal with that so we can focus on uh, the RFEI and moving that forward. Janice, you have so, yep. so Neil, I just want to ask a question as far as this, because we all know um, what happened a couple of months ago when Senator Corbin? Cronin. 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 Well, he's not mine. I don't remember his name. Um, he, he, all of a sudden, you know, it, it, everyone was up in arms because of what he did and it was shut down and even Senator Eldridge, whose territory it really is in, um, was upset. So that's what drove this whole conversation. So if and I think I may have lost my point, so it'll take me a second to get back there. But if we take off the first part, we all agreed that rezoning was still going to be needed because even Peter brought it up before he retired in July. So if we, just, if we removed the whole paragraph one and focused on the rest, how soon can we get something together? Do we still need all the other stuff? What I'm saying is, I, I'm, I'm just trying to figure out how to effectively, okay, and, and, and that's what I, for those who don't know me, I, that's, I don't always say the words, but I mean efficiently and effectively, okay, um, because it doesn't, it doesn't do any of us any good to just rush into something, but how do we address even what Peter brought up months ago? I think we, we set up a, a, a subcommittee to deal with this and, ex, you know, it, that will help expedite the review of this process instead and have a group that is focusing specifically on this Vicksburg Square item um, rather than, you know, adding it on to, you know, the, the jurisdictional framework committee meetings. It's just it's taking up all our time in this in these meetings to talk specifically about this. And we're losing focus on the bigger picture, which is the final, the permanent governance structure of Devons, which this committee is charged with. Now, if I could just uh, take exception uh, with your comment that this committee is, this is taking up all of our time. I mean, you just had a report on the uh, RFEI, and that's moving forward. We're continuing our aggressive attempts as best we can to get uh, money to hire a consultant. We're still working on all those things. And I think the bottom line, and it's been said at this meeting more than once, is what's really holding us back is not having mass development at the table. So yeah. I, I would propose that if you want to set up, if this committee thinks that there should be a separate subcommittee to do at Vicksburg Square, I would be in favor of that only under one condition. And that is if mass development rejoins this committee so that we can really get some, make some progress on establishing permanent government and bring the resources of, of their staff and their money to the table. This is very important. This Vicksburg Square is important. And I think referring it to a, a subcommittee at this point, uh, I think is unnecessary and, and slows us down. Uh, Rich? Yeah, just to build on that, uh, Neil, a year ago we were meeting a quarterly, and we didn't have much to talk about. Uh, candidly. The Vicksburg Square discussion has kind of re-energized re this committee, focused it. I understand the uh, RFI. We don't even have money for the RFI yet. So, you know, I, I don't know what else this committee would be doing if Vicksburg Square isn't being discussed. So I think it's also important as a way for the, the public to be engaged and for us to start learning how to work with each other. So to me, this is part and parcel of what we do. I understand the idea of a subcommittee, but unless there's something else for this committee to do beyond the RFI, which there isn't, for, to Victor's point, there's no money and there's no mass development. And those are the two things we need to actually move forward with the overall big picture around jurisdiction. So lacking that, let's focus on Vicksburg Square now. Yeah, and I, I think Victor brings up a good point in terms of, you know, mass development needs to come back to the table because none of this can happen without mass development, who is the landowner of Vicksburg Square. Um, but again, all of these things require uh, amendments to the reuse plan, amendments to the bylaws, um, and those can be, you know, those can be easily drafted. It's not, it's not rocket science. We can do it fairly quickly. Um, and you know, with that focus, maybe that's a, a draw to bring mass development back to the table, you know? I fully agree. And you know, that was in the back of my... Go ahead, Bill. Go ahead, Bill. 
right, so, uh, uh, you know, just uh, uh, adding on to what uh, Neil said, we, we have two uh, successful uh, super town meeting uh, changes that have taken place uh, over the last five or six years, not having to do with housing, but uh, both of those have references to uh, the bylaws and, and uh, uh, mapping, uh, as Neil said. So we can look to those for the appropriate wording for that. And as Neil said, that's not a very difficult environment to be in. Uh, but we, you know, those, so we, we do have precedent in terms of what uh, the, the, the warrant would look like. Uh, and I think we're all in agreement uh, uh, what mass development's role here is. Uh, <laughs> but uh, you know, if you scroll down on your your package, you'll find the letter from Dan Rivera uh, is fairly straightforward in saying that they're, they're not coming. Uh, so we have to do this, uh, you know, in parallel with them not being here. Uh, whether or not that's going to be successful for us. Uh, is still up in the air. Well, I think the comment was made that uh, by going forward with the planning for a super town meeting specifically to do a Vicksburg Square, we need, we, Mass Development is going to have to sign off on it and it may be a way to draw them in to the process and that wouldn't be a bad thing. Mm -hmm. So let me ask the question, is, it, is there enough time for the, the three towns and the Devons groups to comment on this? and get it back prior to a meeting in January? No. Yes, no? No, I don't think so. Because, I mean, all right. I can have it in the packet um, for my board meeting for next week, okay? It's, it, is it next week? Yeah, but it, we're getting into Christmas, okay? So, you know, whether somebody celebrates Christmas or not. We're getting into a Hollywood, uh, holiday time. We are in holiday time. And so everybody's busy. Everybody's running over here, running over there. You know, school vacation's going to be coming up because of the winter and whatnot. And then, you know, we're scheduled to meet again if we follow the pattern January 9th. I, I, don't, I don't see anyone. I mean, if anyone feels differently, let me know. But I just, I don't. I don't see it happening that quickly, and, I, and I'm being completely honest. It's February. February. Okay. Yeah, that, maybe February. That make more, more sense yes. to mm. skip the January meeting entirely. Okay. Well, I didn't and so say that, that. I said as far as this goes, as far as the, I thought we were talking about okay. the article. We can still meet in January if we have something to meet on. Okay. So feedback to the Warren article by, by February. Okay. Hope get it, if, if we could get it back to Robert Knight before the end before of the, January, that gives us time to February put a report together to bring back to, uh, now, Devon's, Devon's groups, no, John, we'll your back group? back to the constituency, see what we can get. Okay, okay. I think it's a valid okay. request. Um, all right, Brian, that's the end of right. my report. Okay, um, there's nothing else for Vicksburg Square. Um, we do have the letter to uh, Secretary Howe with responses. Okay, so uh, the Devons delegation, Senator Cronin, Senator Eldridge, and Representative Cena communicated with Secretary Howe, who's the chair of the Mass Development Board, for a meeting uh, specifically to talk about funding for this committee. Uh, when that was brought up at this committee's last meeting, uh, I was asked to, to uh, support that with a letter to Secretary Howe, as well as to introduce the idea that mass development should be at the table here, yeah, which I did, and you have a copy of my letter. Uh, she uh, got back to me, subsequently arranged the meeting. Uh, Dan Rivera got back, to, he was copied on her communication. He got back to me with the letter that's in your packet. Uh, and again, as was mentioned uh, previously, he, he made no commitment. But he did say something uh, that I was encouraged by in the third paragraph, and he admits uh, that while we are ahead of schedule at Devon, so uh, I think that's a, 
a worthwhile uh, admission, uh, a worthwhile piece of information for us to have is that they are ahead of schedule uh, there. So uh, it's, time, it's time to plan for the future is, is upon us. Uh, I did speak to uh, Senator Eldridge a couple of days ago about the, the meeting was held. Secretary Howe was not present, but her undersecretary, Ashley Stobel, uh, represented her at the meeting. Um, and I, items were discussed. Dan Rivera was there. And uh, to uh, be generous, it would be to say that nothing was accomplished at that meeting. Uh, there was no commitment to provide funding, uh, nor was there any commitment for mass development to even think about coming back to the meeting. So, uh, you know, it, it's really uh, clear to me that, um, you know, the, the locals are, are really uh, not on the side of angels uh, when it comes to Devons. Um, so that's my report on that. Uh, next, we have under new business, the process for amending the reuse plan by Supertown Meeting. That was Neil Angus provided that. Yeah, hey, Bill Marshall. Uh, uh, you know, Neil did a, uh, did a great job of getting this information. I'll let him speak to it in a minute. But uh, you know, the, the, the discussions we had regarding uh, Pittsburgh Square and the, and the warrant. Uh, you know, this should be the document where the towns and the, the Devons residents and the deck should be looking at in terms of. You know what needs to be accomplished to uh, to uh, to get that uh, super town meeting uh, scheduled and hopefully passed. Uh, so this is a uh, a good document to uh, go back to uh, when you're talking about creating a warrant and knowing that you're going to have to have multiple uh, public hearings uh, to to achieve this goal. Uh, and you know, should there be uh, a a, uh, a paid uh, functionality, whether it be a consultant or, or somebody, uh, to spearhead this? Uh, because if, if each of the towns have uh, public hearings, they may or may not have the same contents, uh, answer the same questions. Uh, you know, we need to have some kind of. Uh, uh, cooperation amongst the towns and is there a leader to do to achieve that goal uh, so I think that's that needs to be a part of that process that uh, the towns take up uh, and, and then come back to uh, this committee with their recommendations thank you I think that's a good good point, Bill. Um, Victor, you would like me to go through this for the benefit of uh, the full committee and the, the public? Yes. All right. Do you mind if I share my screen? Oh, I, okay. You're going to do that because I could have done it. Thank you. Good. I'm not good. I'm not Can you guys see this language? Yes. yes. It's big enough, big enough for you all to read? <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> So essentially, this is the, the, the outline process. As, as Bill mentioned, you know, uh, mass development has been through this process, and, and the towns have been through this process. Um, I think it's four or five times in the, in the past. If you want to count uh, scenario two B back in two thousand six, uh, but this was the process that uh, that mass development and the towns took under Chapter four ninety eight. Any substantial revision um, to the reuse plan or the bylaws uh, is not effective until mass development and the towns um, has, they have to have at least two uh, informational public meetings before the actual super town meeting. So this is a, a way to, to get, um, you know, seek feedback and input from the communities uh, in advance of the formal town hearings so that they could, you know, draft the, you know, Draft the appropriate language for, for any warrant article, get feedback on it before it goes to town meeting, um, and then mass development and the towns would hold, um, would, would then, you know, would they'd have to notice those hearings, 
And then within 30 days of those last, uh, the, the last hearing that is done in the surrounding towns um, or, and or Devons, they'd have to submit um, whatever the final warrant article language is to the boards of selectmen. And then within 90 days, they'd have to host um, a town meeting at the same time. This is the super town meeting portion. Um, and the towns have to adopt or reject it by majority vote. Um, no amendments to the revisions can, or to the uh, to the warrant can be made at town meeting. That's why those two meetings in advance, uh, those two public meetings or public hearings in advance of the actual super town meeting are so important to get language that everybody you know can theoretically agree on, and then you go forward to the super town meeting. And then within you know within 30 days of adoption or rejection of the of the of the um, warrant language, uh, basically Mass Development and the Devons Enterprise Commission would either amend their the bylaws and reuse plan, um, or you know they would it would be rejected and they wouldn't go any further. Uh, the towns would have to report back in writing uh, that that uh, final acceptance uh, or rejection has occurred and that's the, the end of the process it's not that uh that complex although getting three towns to agree <laughs> on that process could be <laughs> has proven difficult in the past but not insurmountable it has happened twice uh um in the past as mr marshall mentioned one for the rezoning of the shirley village growth district to allow for up to 120 units of of uh elderly uh, age-restricted uh, affordable housing um, that modified the housing cap. Didn't modify the housing cap, it said that it wasn't contributing to the housing cap and it allowed for housing in a previously, uh, at a previous zone that did not allow housing. And then another uh, zone change that was done was uh, changing the Innovation Technology Business District um, to uh, accommodate some larger parcels. Um, so that's the, the process in, in, in summary. Um, again, not insurmountable, but um, this is the process that should be followed. So what I'd like to suggest to the committee is that, uh, we, as I mentioned, Mass Development needs to sign off on the language of this Warren article. Uh, I would suggest to the committee that, that we do our very best to come to come to agreement on what the language should be and present it to mass development. Uh, they wanted to be involved in uh, the development process. They should be sitting here at this table, and they're not. So I, I don't think we need to extend the courtesy uh, to them at this point uh, by sending them uh, a draft of what we're up to. Okay. All right. Um, next, we have public comment. I know there's quite a bit of you here. Um, if anyone has a, a comment, please state your name and... Sure. Richard Enright, 19 Chance Street, Devons. I guess uh, I got a basic question. Uh, rezoning the Vicksburg Square theoretically addresses a housing problem. When would the housing problem get resolved in the best case scenario? 2032 or 2025? I, I don't understand your question. Uh, you, you want to rezone Vicksburg Square for housing correct. because there's a quote unquote need for housing. When does that housing need get resolved under scenarios here? Well, so I, oh, I don't know if we'll ever have the housing situation resolved. Is your, is your question how long well, it takes Vicksburg Square to get rid or? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, at what point, I mean, theoretically, some of the politicians, some of the towns are interested in solving a housing problem. When does that, how does Vicksburg Square solve that problem and when? It doesn't solve the problem by any stretch. Well, you're, you know, uh, I would respectfully disagree. It's the densest housing in a 20 mile radius of where we're sitting. So if you put 400 units in there, it more than solves your, your housing problem. How long, if you ask how long it takes to develop the housing, you know, if once the Warren article passes, 
I don't know, Neil, is there a, there has to be, the zone change has to be recorded or there might be some uh, 30 day or 60 day process before it's legal, but mass development could start soliciting proposals to develop that housing immediately uh, and then however long it takes. I guess that's the year uh, to be sure. Yeah, the other question I have is have you been approached by developers who have looked at that property and have some intelligent guess at <coughs> what it would cost to demolish it and, and rebuild something that is habitable or make the existing structures habitable? That's a question for mass development, and I think they have been approached. Well, I guess the qu question is they have been approached, why, and there is a need for housing, why are the existing housing options being ignored? There's a hole in the ground on Grant Road that's been there for a year and a half. That's again, that's and a question. And there are apartment buildings across the street from the community center in Devons, which nobody's ever even talked about, that could be renovated, you know, about five times faster than what is being proposed here. Not to mention probably affordability in the remodel. Those are, again, those are questions for Mass Development. There is 46 unit apartment complex that's permitted, that's within the cap, and I believe there's as many as 18 units that Mass Development can develop on other land zone residential, and they haven't done it. So it, that's, again, a question for them. Well, but you got, you're driving toward developing that for housing. No, no developer has talked to anybody in air about housing in that area. If I may. Janice? So I, 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 I'm a little confused what you're saying. So no, the town of air has not been approached. Okay. So why this committee started talking about Vicksburg Square right. is over the summer, I, I believe it was the summer, I don't remember the exact date, Senator Corbin, without Corbin. any... Corbin. I'm so, really, I am sorry. I'm really not doing it on purpose. Um, that's the sad part. Um, so he went to the legislator and without even Senator Eldridge, who's, that's primarily his territory, even knowing, decided that he was just gonna take it. Yeah. The bill failed. We got wind of it and we even had residents attending the meeting who were very upset about this because how, how can the state just come in here and not even talk? So that's when the idea, which Peter Lowett, who was originally with yep. the DEC, he brought up, we should look at rezoning it. Because the one thing we want to tell the state is, we, and when I say we, I mean all of us, we would like to take care of this, rather than the state just coming in and doing whatever they want. Uh, so that's how this came up as far as the Vicksburg Square conversation. I can tell you the town of Air has not been approached by any developer, nor would any developer come to the town of Air to talk about developing Vicksburg Square because even if they did, I'd be like, why are you talking to me? You've got to go over there. Okay? Well, so, so that's how this conversation come up. But it was a couple of years ago, a little bit before the pandemic, when mass development did come to the towns and said hey we want to bring up vicksburg square again i swear we had one meeting where they uh peter starzak ed, was the, ed starzak mm -hmm. was the guy and he brought it up and he said i'll come back and we're going to have and i have no idea what happened it, it dropped and then of course we had the pandemic and then of course they've all moved on to other things um so the conversation died so as far as that goes now, as far as these other properties, I agree. Why is, you know, that you've talked about it, why isn't that being looked at? That's a very good question. I can only answer to how Vicksburg Square came up in this committee's uh, um, conversation. Is the, is the RFI, sorry to dominate the questions here so far, is the RFI intended to see if there is true demand for the housing that's being proposed? No, the RFEI is to find a consultant that will work with the towns and the DEC and the Devons residents to create the report that will go to the Senate in the 2030 whatever date it gets mailed so that the decision in 2033 can be made. That is the purpose of the RFEI. It has nothing specifically to do with Vicksburg Square. The draft Warren article, as I stated earlier, um, I brought up the subject of, because it does come get mentioned at town meeting. So again, not trying to cause any stress, just trying to kind of say, look, if it goes back to the historical lines, then yes, you know, we, and we would reciprocate to Harvard an equitable portion 
of the air historical line to make up with the Harvard historical line that would move here if that was the scenario in 2033. So, so that's where we are at. Did I answer your question? Yeah, I guess. I mean, I, I don't know what the housing situation is going to be like in 2033, but good luck to people want to trying to find. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Chair, if I could just if I could just add that, you know, a part of the reason Vicksburg uh, has has come to the forefront of these discussions for housing is these these buildings are on the National Register of Historic Places. They are iconic buildings to the to the Devons uh, you know, Devons region, um, and you know this was looked at as an opportunity to repurpose these buildings and. Um, you know, and and meet this help help contribute to the state housing crisis. So this is by no means going to three hundred units uh, is not going to. It's a drop in the bucket, you know, compared to what is needed in the Commonwealth to uh, uh, to provide affordable housing. But um, it's it's a start, and I think it's important to understand that you know that that was a lot of the big initiative for these discussions of utilizing Vicksburg Square for housing was a chance to save these historic buildings uh, because you can't just go in and knock them down. Um, there, there's a, a whole process to go through uh, to, to remove them uh, from the National Register of Historic Places. So, so when there's that. zoning changes uh, proposed though, there's usually a development, a developer um, lurking in the background who wants uh, trying to drive that change. This committee is not aware of one. Okay. This committee it solely did it on a recommendation that was made months ago. And in discussion, we've all kind of thought, well, maybe that's not a bad idea, is to take care of the zoning portion. And also, it sends a message to the state of, like, we really do have this if you give us five minutes. Brian, as I mentioned to you before the meeting, I have a hard stop at 4 o'clock. I need to go. Uh, so Janice will we'll, uh, close the meeting out as we the. Have to finish the public comment, though. I do. We have a little more questions. Oh no, no, we, no, no, no we're sorry. going. No, we're going to continue. He's leaving. We're going to continue. continue. Oh no, I'm leaving. But yeah. Yeah. oh no. Yeah, we're not doing one question and then no, no, no. skip out. No, no, no. Okay. Um, so continuing on with public comment. Um, does anyone have any additional questions? Thanks, Victor. Thanks. Sir. My name is Tim Disky, and I live in Air. I'm uh, not sure that I can ask you to do this or not, but could somebody put the zoning map up on the screen of Devons? So we can take know. a look at the, uh, the zoning that Neil actually is Neil. there for Innovation and Technology Center where Vicksburg Square sits. Uh, Neil can do Neil. it. He'll pull it Neil, is that something you're able to do? Oh, first okay. of all, Neil, were you able to hear the question? I am doing it right now. Just, I, I was, and just give me one second and I will pull it up. Cool. So the reason I'm asking is I looked it up on my phone. It may not be right on the phone before I make a comment. I wanted to make sure it's the right app. Um, and unfortunately, my computer is, is going slow, so bear with me. The reason for the question that I'm asking. Oh, here we go. Okay. Here we go. So I want you to just put up the part that is the Innovation and Technology Center, where I believe Vicksburg Square. This is related to Vicksburg Square, mm -hmm. obviously. Jeff won't stop. So we can pull in on that. And okay, so, so the way I see this it, is, it, 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 hang on. so here's the zone. Uh, the area um, references number two okay. um, is the business community services. But, right, sorry, right. sorry innovation, innovation Technology Center right. zone. So um, when I'm looking at it on my phone, the Innovation and Technology Center, you, you're showing there's a U shape there, is what we're looking at basically. And yes. The, the pot that's white is the uh, fields. Yes, it's the correct. This is outside, and the fields are outside of that. The fields are zoned for open space, open space recreation. Right. So the map online, I'm looking at it is wrong. That's why I wanted to make sure it was what we had there. You, so, you might be looking at an older map. Yeah, exactly. You are, you're uh, looking at that colorized okay. one. Okay. That's, okay. that's why I asked to go All right. So the question was, if you are going to change that Vicksburg Square, you're, gonna, you're basically going to do just that, I want to say, Square that involves the streets that are wrapping around Vicksburg Square and not the balance of the Innovation and Technology Center. In other words, you've got to spot zone that small box that's around Vicksburg Square rather than the entire number two. Is that the intent of the thought? That's a, I think that's a question that needs to be answered by, you know, through, through as, we, as we look at drafting this warrant language. Um, 
What, what, does it, what does Vicksburg Square actually encompass? If you look at the Vicksburg Square Redevelopment District, it includes all of Vicksburg Square, the adjacent uh, theater, the state police building, okay. uh, and the existing U United Native American Cultural Center building, a former bakery building in the back off of Willard Field. Can you see my cursor? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it, it includes all of, it, it actually includes the former hospital, which is now a, a clear path for veterans. It includes the, uh, the uh, learned, former Learning Express building, which was commander headquarters. It includes this small utility building here. This is actually all of the Vicksburg Square zoning dis or, uh, historic district, development district that has specific development review guidelines and so forth. So again, I think you know there's lots that has to be discussed on what actually this warrant entails and where it applies to. That was the intent of my question, so thank you very much. It was to basically determine that it's a lot more than where the buildings that people refer to as Vicksburg Square exist. Correct. Unless you were to put in a really small box around those Vicksburg Square buildings and say this is going to be the new uh, residential area and not include what you just delineated as the entire box. That's what I'm, I'm trying to get at a clarification that, and people understand that when you're talking about Vicksburg Square, we're not talking about exactly where those buildings lie. We're talking about a bigger piece of land, basically. At the moment. At the moment. Right. At the moment, yeah. it's to be determined, you know, what would be, you know, zoned residential. Would the whole district go? Would a portion of it? Yeah. At present, it remains to be seen. What? I remember seeing that online somewhere. That the whole thing is 86 acres. Yeah. Neil, I don't know if you could hear that. The question was, is the whole Vicksburg Square area 86 acres or approximately? Um, I don't have that number off the That's top right. of my head, but I can certainly get it for you. Not, no worries. I, we'll find out. Like, yeah. All right. Uh, continuing Anybody with public else? comment. Anybody else? Yes. Hi, uh, Kurt Preskowski, Air Resident. Uh, just to, one to piggyback off his question. So that two area, what is what does that zoning entail? Is that it says innovation to town technology. Does that allow business development? Does that allow commercial development? What does that allow? Current? Did you hear him, Neil? Yes, I did. It currently allows uh, business business type developments. Uh, small scale uh, retail is, I think, is allowed as an accessory use, but um, it's it's mainly centered around business development. Currently. Um, the Vicksburg Square um, area is zoned for incubator business, um, so like startup businesses, and that's part of the problem with not being able to reuse Vicksburg Square, is startups don't have the money to, to spend on <laughs> revamping the, the space to, uh, to accommodate business use. Uh, and mass development didn't have the money either, so they actually opened up a technology, innovation technology, um, incubator business center at 94 Jackson, another, another former military building. Um, so yes, small business uses, uh, in, or small and large business uses are an allowed use. So very light industrial or, or uh, business type uses. Thank you. Thanks, Neil. Okay. Hi, I'm Jesse Lowe. I live at 20 Chance Street in Devons. I read the notes from the previous DJFC meeting that were made available, and the tone of that meeting just felt like we have to do something about Vicksburg right now. This is urgent. This has to be done. I mean, the, the just the tone of the conversation is very different from what I'm hearing today, and it makes me feel, I, I don't mean to be sounding suspicious, but I'm a Devons resident. There was only one Devons person in the room at the last meeting who was kind of trying to put in a tone of moderation is what I picked up from the last meeting. I'm just trying to figure out what really is the goal of the DJFC in approaching this issue. Is it an urgent wish to get mass development back to the table with this issue? Is it really to develop Vicksburg Square for housing? If it is, is it to knock down Vicksburg Square? Is it to keep it the, the historic building that it was. I just, I don't feel clear, like I feel a difference in tone 
between last meeting's notes and what was said today, which is like, oh, no, no, this is just to flag it for later. Like, it's down the road a whole bunch. That was just not the vibe in the meeting last time. So, so I, I actually was not at the meeting last time, but what I can just tell you from, you know, my, you know, all our conversations regarding Vicksburg Square is I think this is happening um, just kind of naturally only because I think what we're doing at, at this meeting is obviously we're assembled to discuss, you know, the final disposition and, and jurisdiction of Devons as a whole. Right. And, and obviously that's why, you know, we're here. And the key players of that would be everyone that's at this, this table and, yes. and all of, you know, um, everyone that's involved, um, all the stakeholders. On the short term end, it was, as we had said, um, you know, kind of sparked by um, Senator Cronin. That's kind of how this began. But this is obviously not the first time um, we've discussed Vicksburg Square because, you know, multiple factors, whether it's historic, whether it's, um, you know, that more need of housing. Um, and I think the whole point of this is all the key stakeholders and, and players that would have to be in these decisions happen to be in this room. And so I think that's why it's coming up for discussion. I think it's been um, something that's been uh, a priority for the town of Shirley and its residents, you know, for, for quite some time. This is why this, if we went forward with this for, for the third time. Right, so um, there is this feeling of urgency is what you're saying. Well, I, I think in my opinion, um, it would be good to have something done. Um, and as it continues to just, um, you know, the building gets older, et cetera. I think, you know, that that's why it's, you know, that's why we've, this would be the third time we've talked about it is I think in general, people from the towns and the, and the area would like to see something get done. And we just happen to not have a consensus of what we would like to have done. But. I see. So it's kind of figuring out where people stand now so that when there is the opportunity to do something, you have consensus on what everybody would want done. Yeah. Okay. I, I just the other I just have a follow up to that, which is I read the article in the Globe, which presented Devons as like a barren wasteland, and the photos really really backed that up. I have to say, I just feel like we have a little bit of an image problem in the media going about Devons. This is not the same as an abandoned military base in Quincy or Weymouth or anything like that. And I would really appreciate it if everybody could get on board with actually as much as you know. People may have different feelings about how Devons has been run, but we are not a barren wasteland. We have all these thriving businesses. We have whole neighborhoods of people that take care of their lawns, do things together. We have soccer games every weekend, full lacrosse tournaments playing out, right? Restaurants. So I really think it's incumbent upon everyone to get that to get that out there, mm -hmm. because I actually read comments in the Globe that were like, "Let's just take the whole thing and like." Make it a drug rehab center. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, I, I have no issue with that in uh, of having drug rehabilitation as a uh, as a worthy goal in and of itself. It's just not an abandoned neighborhood. That's my point. Jesse, if I make a comment, are you running for DAC? <laughs> <laughs> yes, DAC. Yeah. Well, thank you for serving. Oh, oh thanks. Yeah. Very, very no, that's just the educational part. But I just yeah. I just felt so sad. Like, all the comments were just like... I'm glad you mentioned oh, that, Oh, don't Jesse. ever read the comments. Uh, oh, God. Don't Jesse. ever read no, the no, comments. No, no, no. Oh, Jesse, I did, I did invite John Chesto, the, the writer from Globe, to come actually out yeah. to Devons and see it. It's yeah. a vibrant community, not the yeah, way he just, positioned it. I mean, it uh, the more people get involved and they just start making it. It's definitely. like an armchair armchair expert right mm -hmm. but like this people live there <laughs> so i didn't invite john out out to here to see it because i think that's important uh so we have a white over here who has a question um so i'm 16 almond street um in devon's president your name please i'm kathy benchamal not a public speaker that's all right i just want to be able to say kathy <laughs> just okay speak a little I, volume. all right um so Having lived there for the seven years that we have, I'm um, going in there as an air resident and then turning the switch very shortly after and becoming Devon's mm -hmm. and then sort of being free falling. And where do I fit in? Where, where's my town? I don't belong to air, I don't belong to Harvard, I don't belong anywhere. Mm -hmm. That was a real shock for me. Um, having said that, I have developed a love for Devon's. Mm -hmm. and what I am observing from everything that I listen to is that I feel, and, and I'm gonna say this as gently as I can, 
I feel like we may be used as somewhat of a dumping ground for, 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 okay, for places are, are just to put, okay, so if air does their low income and all of that, and then what's to say that Shirley doesn't take their portion and say, okay, well, let's put our housing in the Shirley section. And then it, I just feel like, you know, we can only take so much. We have low income, we have veterans, we have transition house, we have prisons, we have, we have our share. And I just wonder, you know, is everybody else taking their share? I, I hope they are, because Devons will just be left at, like, like a crime fest. I'm really afraid of that. I see that happening a little bit. And you know, where we live there, we see things that maybe I'm, I'm not as, that you might not accept as readily as we do. We're a small little area. When we see somebody in the neighborhood and they're not doing what they're supposed to, it stands out. So, it, you know, um, veterans that are on our street, God love them, but they do have mental issues. They do just, sometimes they do go back on drugs. We're there. We're, they're three doors down from us. So we have a lot that we have to digest, that we have to handle on a day-to-day -day basis, but nothing outweighs the the wonderful experience of living on Devon's. And that, I don't want to watch it just go mm -hmm. to hell. Well, to, to, okay, I got two hands up. So just to, just, well, that's part of the reason why we are talking about potentially re rezoning. Um, so that it would be in local hands, okay? Because otherwise the state's gonna come in and just, just put it there. And I mean, I think I get what you're saying. You know, I can't um, repeat it, so I hope so. <laughs> well, well, I mean, so I think we all are doing our share, okay? And and, and we're all seeing it in a different angle and everything. Um, but that's what our intent is: is to you know keep it at a local level so everybody has a say. Now, you and you kind of were simultaneous. So, which one wants to go first? Okay. Uh, Lisa Breeden, Bradley Circle, Devons. Um, you stated that part of the issue of getting this going is because you didn't want the state to come in and make a decision on Vicksburg, Vicksburg that you had no say in. Now think of it as a Devons resident who suddenly sees the super town notice that they're going to parcel off part of Devons to air permanently without the disposition jurisdiction to decide it. So you're deciding without talking to the people in Devons that we're gonna parcel off Devons before the decision is even made in 2033. So you're doing to us what you're afraid the state is gonna do. So of course, I would hope there would be a backlash on that, and I don't understand how you can permanent say any part of Devons is permanently to this town or that town. For all we know, Devons could become its own town and then we're going to have an island in the middle of it for Ayer and an island for Shirley. And I don't think that Devons and the Devons residents are being considered. And Jesse's point, too, I read the meeting minutes in October, and I read them in November, and it did state there are no Devons residents. There are Harvard residents who live in Devons. There are Ayer residents who live in Devons. Well, that's not right. I did not move to Harvard. I did not move to Air. I moved to Devons. If I wanted to be in Harvard or Air, that's where I would have bought a house. So, and then a comment was, we're surprised there's a community there. Well, you had the super town vote where Devons wanted to be a town, and it got shot down at the end by one town. So how is there suddenly no community in Devons, and why is it a surprise that Devons is, um, you know, adamant that they have a say in what was going on with us? So some of that is obviously me. Okay. Um, always in trouble. So I just want to kind of remind people that when we first found out about what Senator Corbin did, there were Devon's residents. It's okay. We get it. Translate. Keep going. You know, I'd like to know.
know who this Corbin who person Corbin? I keep saying to. <laughs> All right. All right. I wrote it for you. Oh, that's right. Just sit down. There you go. Keep <laughs> going. When Senator Cronin uh, first uh, brought, it, it did what he did, and it was brought to the attention of this committee, Devin's residents were in that room. And Devin's residents expressed concern about the state. Uh, coming in without anyone discussing okay so that's where that come from all right um, as far as the comments that you know <coughs> air taking over Vicksburg Square I really am being misunderstood I'm obviously not clarifying it very well I've certainly tried but no one no one can make it permanent but the state no one okay all it would be is to just tell town meeting when they asked, no, we, if it goes back to the towns, that's what's going to happen. But the only person who can make that decision, the jurisdictional decision, is the state. And that's with everyone's input. And as far as the comment about your, your Harvard residents living in Devons, yes, that was said. Because, but what was meant, it was said wrong, okay, but what was meant was that Devon's residents vote in the town of Ayer or they vote in the town of Harvard, and I'm not sure if anyone votes in the town of Shirley. So in a sense, you are kind of residents, okay? But yes, you know, you're right. I can, I can certainly tell you Ayer has not, but at the same time, that was the agreement 40 years ago. And if Ayer had come in and said, well, hey, these people belong to us because they vote here, mass development would have been like, no. So it would have been just a class. So it was agreed a hands-off thing. So what's happened is that some badly worded things have been said. But again, no one makes the jurisdictional uh, decision therefore, except the state. So therefore, the wording should not say it's going to become a permanent part of air. So and I think, and I said earlier, I think that we can strike that. So that was simply for conversational purposes. So I think. Um, and obviously, you know, Devin's residents are in a unique position um, where, you know, you're not exactly part of town. It's, it's, you know, it's definitely unique to the Commonwealth or, or any other, you know, um, part in different states. Um, and, but I think, you know, part of this is, you know, it's part of the process, you know, the, you know, the democratic process to an extent, even though it's you know, a little unique in the sense of that wording was put up. Um, I think the wording was put to say, um, you know, that uh, Vicksburg Square would be part of air because in the past, in previous times to it, you know, rezone Vicksburg Square, that was one of the main uh, concerns at the time. So I think that's however that language was, was drafted. And I think part of this process is we're getting feedback. And I think at the next meeting, we had said that, or not the next meeting, the February meeting, mm -hmm. we're going to go back to our towns and all of the stakeholders, including the representatives from Devons, including the DEC, are going to go back to their constituents, so their, the people they receive feedback from, and they're going to make those comments. So, so part of this is even if we move forward at this, you know, with this um, committee, moving forward with Fixburg Square, or it's a subcommittee or what, I, I think getting that feedback, especially from Devon's residents, that's going to be a part of that. And so this is just, you know, one step. This isn't the final legislation that we're voting on. This isn't super town meeting now. So, you know, I, I think this, I hope it shows that I, I think this is part of the, the process that, you know, we, we want Devon's residents is just as much as Ayer or Shirley or Harvard residents to have a, 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 a voice. And I, I'm hoping that it happens through this process. So. I think the only, the only, just to clarify the situation, if there is a super town meeting, there is no such thing as a town of Devon super town meeting. Right, exactly. We are a diluted rounding error part of Harvard or a diluted rounding part of Shirley or Ayer. Yeah. So we get drowned out by the other voices, potentially. Mm -hmm. Just so you know, at town meeting, one voice can fire people. Oh, so, you know, you, you show up at the town meeting and you say, you say, and you, you give your argument, okay? And just like any town meeting, no matter where you're at, you've got a 50-50 shot of winning. Yeah. Um, but you would be speaking at the town meeting that you vote at. 
this gentleman has. Which is the way it's been done in previous town, super town meetings, too. That gentleman right there. Uh, Jim Geller, I'm a Devons resident. The uh, question I have is, is really, uh, I think, mostly directed towards air. I'm, what I'm curious about is, I, I know that as a, you know, with, a, with a commuter rail coming through town, you, you are going to have requirements to come into compliance with uh, Section 3A of the Zoning Act. Uh, and what I'm interested in understanding is how does, how does the redevelopment of Vicksburg Square play into your compliance, or does it not? It does not. Okay. It does not. Okay. Does not. It does not in this case because you have to have designated districts for the MVTA communities yep. um, compliance. And for us, it's our downtown form based code district, which is about 25 acres. You have to have a total of 50 acres. And the other is our West Main Street form based code district, uh, right up by the Verbeck Gate. So those are our two districts that were for compliance with MVTA communities. So it will not in any way include or, yeah. You know, okay, great. Yeah, Thank you for that. Yeah, in fact, Vicksburg Square, yes. Okay. 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 I just want to say, like, I, I think so. Go ahead. I'm Scott Dinsmore. I live in uh, Devons. Um, I'm wondering, what, is the, what has the state had to say about all of this? Have they made any propositions or through, like, mass development or through our elected officials? Do they have an opinion on what's going on? Or are they involved at all? It seems like they aren't at this point, other than just what the senator, uh, not is it Cronin or Cronin? Cronin. <laughs> other than what he said he was going to do if yeah. he tried to draft the bill and then the bill was it was shot down. So have we? Is there anything happening in that regard? Like, do we know what they are? I think they're planning? waiting and seeing what we're doing. I, I think that that's absolutely true. I think this whole discussion about people being upset that we're talking about Vicksburg Square and Victor's comments and Janice's comments about we need to be proactive because if on the state level they look at our group and there's really no action or there's nothing being done, then they can sit here because there's such a housing crisis that they can come in and say, well, they're not going to put up much resistance. Let's just take it over and put 400 units, 500, build six more buildings, do whatever they want without, and we're not gonna have any say at this point, at that point whatsoever. And I think you saw a little bit of that back at, in uh, the Senate was May, so it wasn't a bill that was drafted, it, it was a budget amendment that Senate Cronin put in mm -hmm. and was defeated during the budget process. Now, to your point about the Boston Globe article, you're, that's that. Those are the seeds that are being planted. Okay, it didn't happen by accident. This this story about housing here and over in Weymouth. Um, so make no mistake about it. That if you sit in your hands here, it just gives the state an excuse to come in and do whatever they want, um, and they're not going to have any pushback. But can't they do that anyway? I mean, haven't they, we already seen that? They, if they want to, ultimately they can, yeah. yes. Yeah. But I think to Janice's point and to Victor's point, if we're as a group working towards something and having discussions and to see if we can get something done or we're at least moving towards getting something done, then the state will have to at least have discussions with us. It just reminds me of the uh, the industrial square footage issue, um, where they did an end around for the use plan, and they were able to go to set I guess the three towns, and Harvard put a stipulation on, you know, we're willing to do that to increase it to 12, 12 million square feet, uh, and it, it suddenly ballooned to twenty thousand. Before it checked, what was it? 20 million. 20 I'm million. sorry. I'm sorry. Correct. I'm off by. But, but your point is taken. Exactly. Yeah. But I mean, so it just happened before Baker left office. Mm -hmm. yeah. The legislature said, well, hey, you know, it's okay. We got this. So I, I sit here and I question, you know, and I, I applaud the effort of the local uh, Devons Collect. I applaud the effort of trying to take a hold of something and show them that we have power, we can push back. 
unfortunately, you know, unless the political landscape changed completely, where they followed the rules that they made 40 years ago, um, you know, and because we, when we moved here, we, we believed in the sacredness of the reuse plan. Yeah. And it's like, well, think, this is politics. Things can change. Housing, the whole nine yards. So I, I help us because we can do the best we can, and you know, try to. Be, and I agree. A lot of the, the you know, the, the position of Devons, <coughs> excuse me, in the Commonwealth is, you know, people would say, well, look at they have all that land. They can do this and they can do that. We're doing plenty now. But I agree with that. You know, the consensus that there are buildings over there that could have been rehabbed. You know, very quickly. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. District, it yeah. allows residential development. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they just have to change the zoning so that the, the issue is not. Yeah. Good question. Change the zoning and lift the housing cap or modify the housing cap. <laughs> two yeah. two big hurdles. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Ken. Yeah. So Ken. my question involves two things. So first of all, earlier in the meeting, for Mr. Marshall and from others. It was a discussion that this this board should not handle the Victoria Square discussion that it should be set up to a subcommittee. Are you guys going to vote on that or discount that thought? That's my first question. I, I think that, I don't know, have so a problem with it. Do we need a vote? There's no motion or anything. Yeah. Yeah, I, I need to understand what that committee's purview is and what their deliverables would be. But so once we understand that, we could vote on it. It's just going to move on. So I would make a recommendation that it be put on, on the, the agenda, agenda for the yeah. next meeting. I agree. Yeah. And, and we'll come up with a plan as far as, you know, the oh. description of what the committee will do, discuss it, and uh, vote on it for next. Now, which, are you are you still? Okay. Yes, well, sir. The second part was the discussion of Representative Cronin's concept of going directly to the legislature. Wouldn't there, in fact, if that were to be the case, so basically to clarify and make sure everyone understands, and I know what that guy, I'm just guessing, that basically supersedes the ability of the three town meetings, the super town meeting process, that goes away. They can go directly to the legislature and overcome the requirement for super town meetings so that they could then change zoning in a certain spot. They'd have the same questions again, the same writing up the out. Wouldn't it, in fact, then require that there still be open hearings that we could attend, that we could voice our opinions at. It's not a good, it's, it's not a, a situation where they just do it and it changes. There's got to be. And we're going to take it. He, he put it up for taking. But okay. you know, yeah. It's not even his territory. It, it was it was a budget amendment. It would have right. gone into the FY25 yeah. budget, the state budget, and, and and as long as it made it through. Um, the two houses, the Senate, okay. and then the House, and then the governor signed it, then so yeah, there's no it's, input at it's all? done. No, no, <laughs> Senator Eldridge was surprised, and it's his territory. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> so I would encourage you, as all individuals in this commonwealth have the right to do, is to petition their legislature. You can call Senator Cronin's yeah. office and ask for an audience yeah. or Senator. And he'll yeah. pick up the phone. And he'll, yeah. he'll pick up the phone. So it's a very, very good point. It is the right of every citizen in the commonwealth to petition their legislators. Okay. <clears throat> which is what we at Devons are doing. That's why he was at the Devons committee meeting. What are you doing? What's going on? And it was an open meeting, right? So I would strongly encourage you to, to engage your legislators so that way you kind of have a pulse and an impact. It's really, really important. I mean, that's a really good question. Um, I, I've had the unfortunate experience of uh, being lead and asbestos from a house that I was had to move out. We had to move our kids out of it while we did it to protect them. And I became very good friends with a lot of government officials that kind of set the, um, I just took it all the, like at the FBI mom that I am, I just kept calling up the phone tree until I talked to the people who could really help me figure out how not to poison ourselves and also to be above board when we sell our house to the next person, yada yada. So I really, when I look at Vicksburg, all I see are like lead and asbestos and kids getting poisoned. I'm just gonna be honest with you. Mm -hmm. I feel like there would need to be an air scrubber in every single window, scrubbing out all the particles constantly where the whole thing would need to be tented while everything was abated in there, I do think it's possible because I grew up in downtown Lowell where people would do that kind of thing to save these historical buildings. It has to be done responsibly. So if the town of Mayor takes this project eventually or any one of these towns, what you need to understand is like the next weekend, kids are gonna be playing soccer right there. Mm -hmm. And we don't want them getting like mesothelioma or whatever. So I'm just saying like, it's really important to think about toxics in any discussion and, and think about all the kids that are right near 
um, those buildings, including all the students at the Parker Charter School. Mm -hmm. that, was that a question that we saw? Was yeah. that you? Yes. Can I call, can I call you <laughs> These are the kinds of things that <laughs> keep me up at night. So rest assured that if we were to get the rezoning done right. and a developer uh, you know, went to mass development and said right. they were interested, yeah. and then that they would be part of the project. Thousands of baggies. That, that would be period. part of their project, and it would be, right. and, and I can tell you whether it was in heirs' jurisdiction or not, right. we would support all the residents of making sure that they had, you know, didn't have I mean, these when I, when I, think, out, when I so. read these articles and when I see the, honestly, the pictures in the globe were very triggering for me. The next image in my mind was the way that they've actually taken a hose and a, and a wrecking ball to homes in Detroit, which is literally poison kids. It's just not a responsibility. And that's where we all have buildings. to agree that we can never allow that. And I just want to say that Stonehenge looks a lot better on a camera than it does in person. I mean, you know, <laughs> camera angles and doing yeah. a thing. So we're going to have to round, the, okay. round, uh, round this up a little one soon, final, okay? Yeah, one yeah. Because we do have another meeting okay. coming up. So, okay? So Regina Todd, President of Devon's um, loyal Senator Cronin's unorthodox method is something that everyone was surprised by. I think that we need to reflect on the path that Fixed Book Square has taken and how his one simple action, as distasteful as it may have been, has generated a focused effort on developing Fixed Book Square. And for those of you who are not aware of the short history of Fixed Book Square, under the 2006 Scenario 2B, Vicksburg Square was to be developed. That entire 2B proposal um, was defeated and therefore it did not proceed forward. There was a renewed effort in 2009 that went to super town meetings to redevelop Vicksburg Square. That failed. It went to another super town meeting in 2012. That failed. And as Janice has mentioned in the last couple of meetings, there had been a proposal that a, a developer came in with their their plans that was going to go to a super town meeting in 2019-ish. And all of those proposals from those developers spent a lot of time, money, effort mm -hmm. going through the process with the towns. But the 2019 developer proposal never went to a super town meeting. Mm -hmm. Didn't even go to public hearings for whatever reason, <coughs> I don't know. But we are here now. Mm -hmm. And if it hadn't been for Senator Cronin's proposal, we'd still probably be talking about a jurisdiction decision needs to be made before we disposition Vicksburg Square, which has been ongoing since at least 2021, mm -hmm. with no willingness to address Vicksburg Square without a commitment for jurisdiction acceleration and decision. Mm -hmm. So say what we might about Senator Cronin, but we are now here dealing with an issue that has been decades delayed. So. Absolutely agree. Absolutely agree. So, and now, um, I don't want to cut anyone short, um, but we are going to have to move on so that the next meeting can come in. So I have a couple quick questions. Um, one, are we still going to meet on January 9th? Because we could discuss um, at least the subcommittee and anything else that may come up. Okay. okay. All right, then. All right. Our next meeting will be January 9th, 3 o'clock. Can I, can, I, uh, yeah. can I ask one? Do we add one other thing to the... Absolutely. Can we re rethink the timing of this um, meeting from 3 to after 6? Because there are a significant number of Devons residents yeah. that want to participate. And, uh, and then, anyway, they, they actually want to participate. So yes. if we could add that as an agenda item, that would be great. I understand it was, it was rejected before, but... Would we reconsider that we possibly? It, it can always be asked. It can oh, always yeah. be asked. Hey Neil, Neil, you're not on mute. Hey Neil, Neil, Neil you're not on mute. My apologies. All right. Um, That's absolutely. Tough. Of course, it can all always right. be asked. It Thank can you. always be asked. So, all right. Move to adjourn. Thank you. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. The chair says aye. Good night, everybody. Thank you.